you've patched a modular synth with more than one VCO, you've probably encountered this problem before. You have all your oscillators in tune on one particular note, such as this C. There I've got my ARP 2600 oscillator. I have my microbrace oscillator. And I have my nano rings. All nicely in tune. But as you start going away from that note that you tune to, start to hear a little bit beating, more, until just two octaves away, I've got quite a bit of detune between the notes. Well, unfortunately, this is an affliction for most modular oscillators. Each one seems to have its own idea of how to track the incoming keyboard control voltage. Even worse, a lot of controllers, CV keyboards, MIDI to CV converters, sequencers, also have their own idea of exactly what voltage to put out for each note. For example, if I look at just the 2600 here, down at C2, I'm in tune, but up at C4, you see it's a little bit flat. On the other hand, I'll bring up the braids, change to look at its pitch. C2, it's in tune. C4, it's actually sharp. And then I'll bring up nano rings, bring it up on the data. Again, C2, it's in tune. C4, it's actually in tune, so it's tracking pretty well. But the other oscillators are either going flat or sharp. Even more insidious, I'll bring back up the ARPS oscillator. You'll find that some keyboard controllers, MIDI CV converters, etc., don't have the best intonation themselves. For example, as I go up the keyboard with this particular oscillator, I'll go back to looking at the 2600, C2's in tune. I start going progressively flatter as I go up the notes. You see I'm about two tick marks flat up here as I get to the G. I go to A, same thing. Go to B, I'm actually less flat. I'm only one tick mark flat. I go to C, now we're closer to two tick marks flat. So there's even a problem with the tuning of this B on the keyboard. And that can come down to problems with not having an accurate enough digital to analog converter on the output, etc. Anyway, how do you cure this? Well, there's a few different ways. Some oscillators do indeed have different tuning adjustments. These two digital modules have digital procedures that you go through, and I've already run them on both. It did well on nano rings, not so well on braids. Some have trimmers on the front or back. These are accessible behind these little plugs. Some VCOs have no trim adjustment at all. Quantizers can fix problems from keyboards and controllers and MIDI to CV converters, but they won't fix your VCO tracking problem. There are a few modules out there, such as the AGH V-Scale and the Clavis Caltrans, and I've owned and used multiples of both of them, and they do help solve parts of these problems. But eventually, I just broke down and worked with DJ Phaser of the Phaserville Suite for Ornament and Crime to build a custom app called Calibrator for the Ornament and Crime hardware, which gives me four channels of tracking adjustments and lots of other features for my oscillators. So I'd like to demonstrate that to you. Calibrator does several things. I'll go ahead and toggle back to my notes and octaves. It is a quantizer with a wide variety of scales, including some user scales you can program yourself using the standard interface that the Ornament and Crime has. It even has the ability to turn the quantizer off, but since the Ornament and Crime itself is only 12-bit quality on input, I tend to leave it on unless I'm doing things with slides. And then if I do a short press on the right encoder, I can toggle back to adjusting my control voltage and my pitch. In one mode, I can change the octaves and semitones for this particular channel. With a short press of the left encoder, I go down to this line where I can make sub-cent adjustments of how the fine tuning is per oscillator and also equally fine adjustments for the tracking of that oscillator. So let's put that to use tuning up the oscillators in this particular patch. I'm gonna take one of the buffered multi copies of my keyboard CV, plug that into channel one of the Ornament and Crime, little number up here, and have that output take over the keyboard CV for this oscillator. I'll bring it up to a drone so we can hear what's going on. I'll play C2 as my reference. I happen to like C2 for reference just because it outputs zero volts. You see this LED goes out. Green is positive voltage, red is negative voltage. When I'm at zero volts, I know that one of my tuning references shouldn't change no matter what I do. So there's zero volts. I see I'm a little bit flat. I can use the fine tune on the front panel of the ARP, but it's a little bit touchy. I got pretty close there. I'm on the other side. 
Or I can use a feature of Calibrator to say, let's put the knob somewhere such as in the center and use Calibrator's right encoder when I'm on the bottom line, toggled with the left encoder, and go ahead and bring that down with subset accuracy and get right on the mark. Then I'll go up to C4. I see I'm flat and I'll use the left encoder to adjust the tracking, how I'm tilting across the keyboard. Higher numbers are sharp, lower numbers are flat. So I'll go ahead and go to a higher number here. Get my tracking back to where it should be. Always go back and play your first note again to make sure it didn't drift. And then your high note, perfect tracking for the ARP. I'll turn that down and bring up micro braids. Switch to the second channel here and focus on the second channel of the ornamented crime. So I'm going to take the pitch for micro braids out, run it through the second channel, take that output into the one volt octave input, go back to my C2, and I see I'm a little bit on the flat side again. Again, I could use the fine tune control in the front panel. Get pretty close, but it's finicky. I'll increment up to the second channel and use the sense control in Calibrator because it's much easier to adjust these little trimmer shafts, things like that. A little bit flat there. There we go. Now I'll go up to my C4. I see in this case, it's going sharp. So I need to adjust this number slightly below 100%. So we're not putting out quite as much voltage for those higher notes. I'll bring it back down into tuning here. Pretty good. Go back and play my C2 to reference that that's okay. Yeah, maybe a cent higher. C4, it's pretty much on mark. Bring that down and tune rings. Now, resonator modules and other things to do pluck and struck sounds like rings, percussion modules, are notoriously difficult to tune. For one thing, it's not making a sound after the notes died away, which makes it hard to see what's going on on the oscilloscope. Out of range means it's not seeing a signal that it can follow. If you have a polyphonic module, take it down to one voice. That way, when you re-trigger it, you're always re-triggering the same voice instead of having multiple voices detuned ringing on top of each other. Make it fairly long release time, so you have some time to capture what the pitch is. And I tend to go for it just a little bit higher than normal brightness. I think it makes it easier to follow when in truth these things are just following the fundamental you could turn brightness down. It's stamped that I need to be a little longer. I'll play my C2. Oh yeah, and this is the oscillator that was well behaved. C4. C2. Well, let's go ahead and run it through a channel of Ornament and Crime anyway because I want to use the other features of Ornament and Crime and the Calibrator firmware a little bit later on. There's my Volpro Octave. Like all the other notes, it's a little bit flat, which makes me think that the MIDI CV converter in the ARP was a little bit off. Again, I can go ahead and sharpen it up from the front panel. And actually, Rings has a pretty sensitive control, so I can get pretty close. And C4. Pretty good. Now let's bring our other oscillators back up again. Pretty good. Now we have good tracking across the keyboard. Now you might be the type who says, you know, I don't really want perfect tuning. I like a little bit of beating. Well, that's fine. I'll take the calibrator back to channel one, which was the ARP oscillator. And if I want a specific amount of detune, I can dial it right in from the front panel. Pretty good. Let's go ahead and bring it back to where it's on tune. Now, different oscillators respond differently when you're trying to fix their tracking. Digital oscillators can be the worst. Actually, Emily Gillet's oscillators are good because they'll take a negative voltage, but there's a lot of digital sound sources and VCOs that cannot take negative voltages. And if you get close to zero volts, they go madly out of tune. So those, I need to be careful to put them in a low tuning range from the front panel and boost the voltage that I'm feeding them so I always stay in the positive realm. Also, with the ARP, it shares a foible that some other analog oscillators have as well. Zero volts, no color my LED here. It's nice. I've got some pretty good tracking going on here. Go ahead and adjust that just a hair. A 
But when they go into negative voltages, and I'll go down an octave, they go madly out of tune. I've had several analog oscillators that track below zero volts differently than they track above zero volts. So again, in those cases, I'd give them a fairly low bass tune from the front panel and make sure that I'm always feeding them a higher voltage so I stay out of that zero volt range. Go back to where we were tuned. Once I've set up a group of oscillators inside the Calibrate software, I do indeed want to save that preset. And you have multiple presets inside Calibrator. I'll do a long press on the down arrow, and it gives me four different slots that I can go ahead and save this set of parameters into. Now, the basic set of parameters that have this tuning adjustment, the send adjustment, and the tracking, I probably want to save them in all my slots because I'm going to want that for everything. But as we're going to get to here in a second, I can also do transposition and scales inside Ornament and Crime, and you can save different preset transpositions. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and say save into slot A, and I can switch between load and save, including a clear. Press the right encoder and I'm saved. And I see up here there's an A. If there was an asterisk, that means I would have changed something and I would need to resave again. I'll go back with a long press. And I see that I have indeed saved into the A slot. And again, a long press on that encoder clears it out. And now the clear A with no asterisk shows that I've saved my most recent settings. Well, if that alone is all that Ornament and Crime did, it would be like a really nice AGHV scale. But it goes beyond that. We've borrowed some of the features from the wonderful Clavis Caltrans of having octave and semitone transpose for each of the channels. I'm going to short press left encoder to get back to my tuning here. Bring up my oscillator so I can hear my intervals between notes. And let's say I wanted to take the ARPS oscillator and move it up a fifth, seven semitones. I'll go up seven semitones for channel one. Now it's playing that very nice interval. You can see when I press C, it's actually playing a G note. Same if I wanted to adjust the tuning of, say, the nano rings. Maybe I wanted to be up a minor third, so I can do a little minor chord here. That would be three semitones. Or four for a major chord. Or I can go up an octave. down an octave. Back down to my first channel, changes tuning if I like. Now it's really cool to be able to change these octaves and semitones for each of the channels. It's a performance trick that I use. However, there can be a problem when you're performing that you might want to try to change this tuning before the notes died away, because maybe you need to get it ready for the next note or the next downbeat. Well, we've put a sample and hold function inside Calibrator that takes advantage of the trigger inputs. It says hold off on changes until you get a trigger. That trigger could be your keyboard trigger. It could come from, say, a master clock or a sequencer that's only giving you a trigger every measure or every two measures. So you have plenty of time to set up. I'll go to just the ARPS oscillator. Normally, when it's live like this, you can hear my tuning adjustments, which I may not want to happen while something's playing. But if I go into the trigger input, and do a long press on the left encoder, you'll see some icons change up here. One long press gives me a little stopwatch icon that says basically, hold my transpositions, don't do anything until you get a trigger, such as from the keyboard. Now it has my transposition. Then go back down, and now holds it again. The keyboard control voltage is still hot. I can still go to, say, the pitch bend, In response to that in real time, it's these front panel controls that it's holding off on. Let's say you do want everything held off to get a trigger, not just the encoder changes, but also the CV coming in. Classic sample and hold application. You might have like an LFO going into a quantizer and use a trigger to select a new note. Well, one more long press gives you this little staircase icon, and that indicates it's in sample and hold mode. The pitch bend doesn't do anything. These notes here don't do anything until I press another note. Same thing with pitch bend. I can pitch bend, won't take hold until I press the note. Classic sample and hold behavior. We'll go back down here. 
Now one other thing I should note is in the scale selection, I mentioned there's a way of turning the internal scale quantizer off. I just press the right encoder to come over to this side and change my scale to off. And I need to remember to take off my sample and hold. One more long press, back to normal. Now when I do a pitch bend, it's continuous. So you might want to turn that off if you have glides coming from your sequencer. Although the initial intonation is going to be a little less accurate. You see where C2 jumped up there? I play different notes. We're going to get different tracking here, particularly that A is flat. That's why I tend to keep the quantizer on when I can. So my incoming notes are quantized. You might also have noticed that there is a separate underscore note here. That is what is my root key, which is very important for scales. I have it set to C right now, but you can adjust it to whatever note that you like. Now again, if I want to save this, long press on the right arrow. I can choose what slot to load or save into. I want to save into that slot. I pick a different slot, go back to A, press, and I've now saved that preset. There's one other thing to remember though, and this is kind of an ornament and crime hangover. You may have saved these presets, but if you want to save the entire state of the Calibrate software to memory, you need to do a long write encoder press. This is where you can go ahead and choose different apps running inside here, such as your scale editor, by the way. And then one more long press, and you see it says it's saving. Now it's saved the entire state of Calibrator, including all four of your presets, into memory. So when you're done, make sure you've done a local save, long right arrow, and also have done an overall save, long encoder press, second encoder press, saving. And that's the Calibrate software. It's free. It's part of the Phaserville suite, and I hope you find it as useful as I have. I have one of these in my gigging case, and I've been traveling with it lately, and now I've just installed six of these into the Munster system I have at home, so that every one of my sound sources, including both BCOs and complex oscillators, etc., all have good tracking. That way I can fire up the machine, let it warm up for a half hour or so. I always do that with analog gear. And then I can choose any combination of oscillators that I want. One channel, this is dedicated to each of my oscillators. They're all going to track together. I hope you find it useful too.